let's try to understand what's driving that increase that we see in this proposed budget. The change, as you can see in the lower right, is one one million one hundred ninety-seven thousand uh, dollars. And when you compare that delta between FY11 and FY12, you'll see by looking at the bottom row that most of this money, most of the increase from FY12 to 11 results from personnel related expenses. And that's a proportionate view of what is driving the increase. This slide is trying to uh, show you what is driving that increase from FY11 to 12. And uh, the, the vast majority of that increase, $1,160,000 worth, is resulting from personnel. But it's not necessarily a personnel increase. If you recall what I said a moment ago, much of that personnel increase in the last two years had been reduced through ARA money. But because we don't have this ARA money in FY12, it makes it look as though that the personnel increase is uh, much higher than the previous two years. It is, but the reason for it is not unusually high collector bargaining contracts as much as it is a change in the lack of error money. So, as you start to construct a budget, you, start, you have to understand uh, also what funds the budget. Um, the process that we use in North Reading is a process whereby the municipal government and the school department create proposed budgets and then meet uh, collegially across the town to try to determine what kinds of funds are available to us to fund our proposals. And uh, the school budget is comprised of four buckets. There are four different areas of the budget that uh, are used to uh, fund the budget. Um, in <coughs> declining order, it begins with local receipts. Uh, the town of North Reading collects funds for property tax, for uh, auto excise tax, all of the bills that uh, North Reading residents pay, and we are, seeing, we are seeing that this economic downturn has affected all communities, including North Reading, and some of the funds that uh, uh, would be used to support school and municipal budgets are uh, relatively flat, or declining in some cases. The second area of uh, sourcing for budgets is state aid. <coughs> and uh, due to the educational reform legislation, back 10 or so years ago, Chapter 70 uh, contributions to municipalities had been increasing at fairly healthy rates. We saw years where we had 8 to 10 percent increases in Chapter 70. Um, one of the challenges, by the way, is that we are only uh, estimating what we think our Chapter 70 costs will be in this budget <coughs> because the legislature has yet to act on the governor's proposal and it is even possible that we will not know definitively what our local aid uh, monies will be until after town meeting. But at this point, we're using estimations. Third area of uh, uh, monies for the budget are our user fees and grants. Uh, whether it be bus transportation, athletic user fees, uh, <coughs> or grants that we write, these are all uh, small sources in the scheme of things to help support the budget. Um, lastly, carryovers. Uh, fortunately, the school committee saw FY12 coming as early as FY08, FY9. I think it was in October of 2008 where the stock market collapsed and all of the economic difficulties uh, began. At that moment, we began within the confines of the law trying to carry over funds. And, uh, as much as we wanted to use those in previous years, we've been carrying over funds in an effort to uh, deploy them in FY12. And that uh, is going to be of great assistance. So, okay. So on Friday, the uh, finance planning team met to determine what the latest available funds figure was, and thanks to a lot of pencil sharpening and a lot of uh, work, uh, the budget gap that had been actually over $600,000, actually 656000 I believe, um, has been halved. 
So if, as we stand here, the difference between the preliminary budget that the school department and the school committee is considering and the funds that are available is about $300,000. So as, as we uh, move this section of the presentation to a close, what are the next steps? Um, most importantly, we continue to monitor what the available funds are. Should there be any changes, uh, we can immediately integrate them into our budget formulations. Um, there are some other questions that are still un unresolved in terms of health insurance. Town revenues, we'll be watching those continually. Um, we also uh, will be looking at what happens with State Chapter 70 and Circuit Breaker. Circuit Breaker is a special state fund that is used to provide uh, aid to school departments for high expense special education children. There are uh, hopes that there'll be increases in the budget <coughs> this year. We will continue to look at the FY12 budget as it's written to see if there are other economies that we can, we can uh, exact out of them. Um, I would mention to you, by the way, that the detail of the school department budget has been on the school website. It was posted on February 14th, the day that we released it, and we'll continue to post detail on there uh, as appropriate. Um, the school committee will be meeting two weeks from tonight to take a position on what budget they will recommend and so that's two weeks from now. And then uh, the last step in the process is town meeting, uh, June 6th, first Monday in, uh, in uh, June. So at this stage, I'm um, going to turn the meeting over to the superintendent. We are going to discuss uh, where we are today and where we're going tomorrow. Thanks, Carl. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. At this point in time, Mr. Colleen is going to hand out a sheet of information to you regarding the FY12 budget tracking that will provide detail regarding reductions to close that $309,000 budget gap. <clears throat> as Mr. Nelson had alluded to, as we took a look and began this process, we knew that we needed to make some adjustments to the modified level services budget. We knew we had some declining enrollments in some areas, increasing enrollments in others. We had some need for additional staff to provide uh, required services to students at the high school level. So we made those adjustments as we do from one year to the next to our budget to get us to where we needed to provide modified level services. What you're receiving now is an overview of the proposed and recommended reductions. So let me give you a little background. As Mr. Nelson had mentioned, on Friday, the finance planning team that consists of representatives of our board of selectmen, our finance committee, our school committee, and Mr. Nelson and I also sit on that committee. We come together monthly to discuss the budget, to plan, and to make recommendations regarding future budget planning. At that time, the school committee, and I'm sorry, the Board of Selectmen released a revised revenue plan that provided 346,390 additional dollars to the school budget. That was the good news. That was very good news because we had already made a proposed list of cuts to close the gap that equaled $656,000. So today, the administrative team came together in the, during the late morning half hours to take a look at those proposed cuts that were made to satisfy that $656,000 gap. And you would think being able to reduce the list would be an easy task, but it was not. It was very difficult because all of these cuts are devastating to the school budget. But there was one thing that remained true to all of the discussions that we had and that was the centrality of the classroom. It is important to maintain low class sizes as well as our instructional staff um, as best as we can to provide the high quality of education that our students are used to receiving in this district. When I first came here, people said we do more with less. That continues to hold true. You have a very high quality 
high-functioning working faculty and administrative council. And today that council had to come together and make some tough decisions. But what you see before you are the decisions that resulted from that conversation. And so I'm going to take you through that as we sit here now. At the top of the page, and school committee members, you have this previously. Cindy, do you have a copy of this as well? Okay. The top of the page, you can see what Mr. Nelson already detailed for you. The FY11 budget, the preliminary budget, the available funds from the town, and the budget gap. So we took a look at two areas, our non-personnel costs as well as our personnel costs. At the top of the page, you'll see it's, um, we have reduced the budget by $63,225, and that's attached to small capital improvement used to purchase textbooks and instructional materials. That completely wipes out that account. The school council, the administrative council, also took a look at the original recommendation to reduce school expenses, general supplies and materials, by 10%. And after lots of discussion, they made the recommendation to reduce their local budget school expenses by 15%, totaling a reduction to the school budget of $98,103. That was all done with the intent to preserve teaching positions. District-wide professional development was discussed. The funds that were allotted for district-wide professional development that you see here as reductions to the budget in the total of $30,000 provided opportunities for teachers and <coughs> our professionals and administrators to attend a variety of conferences and workshops that has been completely eliminated. We can still do the important work that we need to do around curriculum alignment during our professional development days, but we won't be going outside of the school district to attend conferences and workshops to assist us. We'll be working internally. We can still get a lot of good work done, but we have cut that line completely. Under personnel, we are proposing a very difficult cut of eliminating our only instructional technology teacher in this district for a total of $45,000. <clears> now that person has um, additional licenses, so she will move into another position in this district, but that position of instructional technology teacher is being recommended for elimination. What's also being proposed is the grade seven flex foreign language program for a total of a .4 middle school foreign language teacher, totaling $18,000. That is a 10-week program that's provided to all seventh grade students to give them an introduction to the foreign languages that they will participate in in grade eight. What's also being proposed is the equivalent, well, it is a full-time high school teacher we have a retirement in the arts department for next year, and we're saying we'll absorb that retirement and <clears throat> make a reduction to some of the offerings in the art department for next year for a total of $45,000. We're also proposing the reduction to our custodial staff by one full-time employee, equaling $42,000. And in order to cover the unemployment costs of these reductions, we've also indicated um, that we need to add $26,250 to the budget for a total cut of non-personnel as well as personnel uh, of $315,078. So we've gone over by about $5,000 in terms of the reductions that have been made. So at this time, I'm going to turn this back to you, Mr. Chair. At this time, um, I'm sure all the members of the committee want to express opinions, but I think at this time we prefer to hear initially from the public or from members of the other boards um, who are here tonight. <clears throat> if you have questions for any of the administrative council, you can direct them through me, and then I will um, make sure that you get question answers. So at this time, Mr. Delaney? Who would you like me to hear? Uh, I don't you know, just stand right there. I got you. I guess that microphone picks up everything. You're good. 
I wear many hats as I'm here tonight. 